Good afternoon. Today is Sunday, July 26th, uh, 2020, and it's 3 p.m. here in Pasadena, California. And here's the update for the last week. So uh, a few things up front. Yes, timelines uh, on our plans have been affected uh, by the coronavirus, as everything has been. We had uh, plans last year we laid down to convene uh, a meeting and, and handle various business for the company. That was the reason for uh, mentioning those things and, and setting out some timelines and talking about voting on various things. Uh, that has obviously changed uh, in view of coronavirus. So um, I, I just want to put that on the record because it should be pretty obvious that everything that everybody is doing has been changed according to that as is clearly evidenced by the shifting of sports uh, schedules or elimination from uh, play this season entirely. So uh, I want to point out something up top here uh, because I believe this is really important and I want to put this on the record publicly right here, right now. Um, I have almost no doubt, uh, approaching almost zero doubt, that if the SEC makes the mistake of trying this case uh, against us in front of a jury, not playing lawyer games, not trying to foul us up on a technicality, none of that kind of garbage, which is what lawyers seem to do these, these days instead of actually dealing with the facts and the law. Uh, there is no way, and I mean no way, that a jury of my peers is going to find you in the right. It's going to be a hung jury at best, at best, no chance of anything else. And here's the reason, the one main reason, without getting into these ridiculous discussions about whether or not it's okay to give things away as a nonprofit. One thing is going to stop this case cold, and I would focus entirely on this as the main argument in front of a jury. We petitioned for a no action more than four years ago. In fact, on March 3rd, 2016, we filed it. Two years later, roughly, you asked us to remove, uh, actually, the, yeah, the summer of 18, you asked us to remove the mention of that from our website. It had been there for two years without any explanation, and I naively did it without understanding what you were really doing. What you were really doing was covering your ass so you could try to sue us, okay? Now, I have clear records and timelines and email communications on that entire timeline. And there is no way, and I mean no way, that a jury is going to understand that, okay? They are not going to understand us approaching, now, never mind all the rest of the case, okay? Just this one point where we petitioned you for no action, you did not act on that. We had preliminary communications. Then you turned right around and you filed lies in your lawsuit as if we had never contacted you. That is flat false, okay? It will not pass the light of day. Nobody is going to be able to produce any alternate information on this. That is what you did. That is the timeline. And no jury of my peers on the planet Earth is going to understand that. And let's go over oaths for a second. Because I can draw red lines around lies on your pleadings. And I just want to remind you what's in that oath. So I'm going to read it, okay, from Cornell University, their legal definition. An attestation that one will tell the truth or a promise to fulfill a pledge, often calling upon God as a witness. The best known oath is the pledge to tell the truth for perjury, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. If you omit, forget declaring flat falsehoods, such as that we never approached, that we never, which is a bald-faced lie, flat out documented, flat out in documents in evidence, okay? That's a lie. If you shade things so that the wrong impression is created in somebody's mind, that is a lie, okay? Now, I know lawyers play, this is how you make your money, okay? You play these games with words. I don't play games with words, okay? So go ahead and try the case. I'm going to say it again. Put this dog shit case in front of a jury. I fucking dare you.
an educational economic development nonprofit. That is what we are. That is what we have always been. That is what is filed in the 2011 incorporation documents and the follow-on 501c3 documentation. We are doing exactly what we said we were going to do. Exactly what we said we were going to do. I had the video call last week with a, um, a British rugby um, affiliated gentleman. That's all I'm going to say. It's a very good call. He's going to talk to the, some other people and get back to me. We'll see what happens. Again, these things are ongoing, but nothing more than that is going to come out of my mouth until there's a press release on anything. Lesson learned. Briggs and Stratton bankruptcy. This is a really sad one because this is from my childhood. Anybody that has any motorized vehicles is going to remember or lawn mowers or any of that knows Briggs and Stratton. Um, that's a hundred year old company, bites the dust, just to show you how hard things are these days. Um, SPAC activity he heating up. This is again uh, because of Ackman's uh, $4 billion SPAC, which started trading last week. Uh, I'm not going to go any further in this discussion right now. It is being discussed behind the scenes very seriously. Alper is involved in that. But uh, he's asked me to, to ease up on this until we can make a firm assessment of whether this is, in fact, viable and the timelines. But it's being taken extremely seriously, especially in view of this uh, very rapidly uh, developing environment and, and, and Wall Street enthusiasm. So uh, that, that's being looked at. So our uh, occupant of uh, the White House decided to completely reverse on masks and all of that. And I, look, whatever, that's all I'm going to say. Um, cheering for the loss of your own money. So there appears to be some people that claim to be vested in this that are publicly cheering the loss of their own money. That doesn't make any sense to me. So I call bullshit. I say that you're not part of it at all because if you were, uh, it would make no sense for you to do what you're doing. So I'm calling you a liar, okay? That's what I'm doing. So keep hiding behind your, your uh, fake names and stuff. And when the Bieber case decides, okay, and that's a mandate, I'll subpoena the records and we'll see about suing you and taking all that stuff down. So, you know, you guys don't obviously don't, don't understand. And look, if you're really vested in it and this is what you're doing, you're a fucking stupid idiot. It makes no sense. You're not going to change the direction of anything. You're not going to cause a change to happen. You're not going to do anything other than put your own investment and other people's investment at risk. So, um, And should something actually happen that damages the rest of the stockholders, that same subpoena to your, you think you're invisible, I'm going to make sure they all know who you are. Okay? So keep that in mind. And I have an 11,000... 500 name email list that is one mouse click away from transmission. Okay, so that's my microphone compared to yours. Okay, you have your little fingers behind the keys, hiding behind a fake name and typing a bunch of lies and twisted stuff. And I have the power of the law in California to extract your identity information and file a lawsuit against you. And I have 11,500 people I can I can alert to your name with the click of a mouse, okay? So if you want to play games, I'll play games with you. That's my guns, what you got, okay? That's not even all of it. That's the easy stuff. So, um, yeah, so I call bullshit on that. I don't believe you're invested. I think you're all full of shit. Um, reporter from the early days working with Alper um, on some projects uh, contacted us. Uh, you would know who it was if I told you, but I'm not going to for the sake of the others, uh, the ones that don't want their, uh, their investment wrecked by a bunch of malicious assholes. So we'll leave it there. There are also uh, other people who are working with other insiders, including recent insiders that are volunteering for various projects. So that's still open. If anybody is interested in helping, uh, you can drop a note to support at asmfree.com. Tell me what you're interested in, and I'll hook you up with whoever in the team is working on that part. So we can use more help. I mean, there's always more work to do. We have more work to do. So if you want to help, please speak up. No Fall TV. That speaks for itself. Uh, HBO is putting together a, a coronavirus sports show. 
Uh, if anybody out there is connected to the showrunners, I've already uh, mentioned this to Ace and I've already published it on LinkedIn. Uh, we would like to talk to the producers to see if there's any part of our story they would be interested in. Um, okay, so a couple of things I want to put out here uh, because I don't hide from things unlike other people. Uh, I've had to file personally bankruptcy, personal bankruptcy three times over the course of developing ASM, three times. One of those cases was dismissed. That's a Chapter 13 case in 2000, uh, I believe it was 13, yeah, 2013, 13, uh, 13 in 2013, to reorganize my mortgage with Bank of America because they refused in spite, uh, this was from 2008, 2009, in spite of clearly qualifying for the programs to modify my mortgage, I was forced to fill out the forms four or five times. They denied it, and ultimately I crammed it through the bankruptcy court and got them to modify the mortgage, turned around and sold the house at a profit, okay, and helped pay for some of my kids' expenses. That's what took place on the 13. That's in the public record. Help yourself. I'm not hiding from anything. Chapter 7 also, in two th in the, uh, prior to that Chapter 13, I was actually doing what's called a Chapter 20, which is Chapter 7 scrub scrubs off the unsecured debt. Chapter 13 reorganizes the rest. So uh, the seven was discharged. That's where Leon's claim was, which was the pro product of a default judgment because I was not allowed to answer the case. That is absolutely 100% clear on the record. There is no trial on the, mat on, on the facts. There's no trier of fact. There is no trial, okay? It is a fucking monkey shit, one-sided, no defense, no cross-examination, in spite of the fact that I asked to show up at the trial after the trial was booked, okay? That's all in the public record. And the same judge that did this shit to me has the case back again in October. So that's a lesson. Fuck it up and it comes back. And if he fucks that up again, it's going to go up the California court system, okay? So Mr. Leon, get your fucking checkbook out. You're going to fight that in California. You're going to fight it in the California State Court of Appeals, and you're going to fight it to the Supreme Court if necessary in the state of California, the California Supreme Court. Now, I also had to file another Chapter 7 in earlier this year at the end of February because I could not carry the company debts any longer. Not personal debts. I did not go out on vacation. Those things were paid out of my own personal part of the salary and nothing else. All of my credit cards were used for ASM purposes. That includes paying Jason Henry's salary. That includes paying things for ACE. That includes paying rents for various things. That includes domain names. That includes lawyer fees. All of that is in the records, okay? It is, I would happily show that to anybody that was entitled to see it, okay? A court or whoever. It's all there. That's what it was spent on. Those trips flying around with Hero Club, that was not a fun for me, okay? I did not stay in expensive hotel rooms. There are personal witnesses to this. I spent all of that on my income, most of it. And when we got, um, about a year ago, the, the economy started to go down. And actually, I'm on record saying that. And I was still traveling and doing all those things to advance the business. And it re finally reached a point where I couldn't take it anymore. And, and that was the decision. And since I don't own, own any stock, uh, it, it doesn't affect ASM. It's not ASM bankruptcy. It's only my, on my name. And I did put that money on, on, on company uh, expenses to, to, to su support ASM. So it's valid. And it was discharged. Okay. But Leon, being the asshole, dickhead, lying son of a bitch that he is, got filed in that case and tried to have the bankruptcy case completely dismissed. Okay. In other words, he not only wanted me to not be able to discharge his debt, he wanted my entire case to be thrown out and all of that debt to be around my neck. The, I guess the rest of my life. The judge said no. Okay? Okay? The judge said no. And then he pulled another trick trying to uh, pull a file. He tried to complain again, basically the same complaint about dischargeability, and then withdraw it at the last second. And we caught him. And now the, the answer is going to be filed. And now he's got to deal with a dischargeability case in California and in the federal courts. Two tracks. Two tracks, two retainers, two, and all of this material is all going to be mixed together. And one of these courts, I am confident, it's either going to be the bankruptcy court or it's going to be 
the uh, California court system, one of these courts is going to mash Leon into the ground. Okay? It's just a matter of time. In the interim, he's going to have to keep writing those checks to them lawyers because he doesn't plead his own cases. Okay? He has never appeared at anything going back even 10 years. So here's what we're going to do. And Sethi Pooh, I hope you get this message. You're going to get a subpoena. That's right. Remember when I said you're going to get asked questions on the record? Well, guess what? That's coming. Okay? So you've had a good time with this, but that good time is over. Okay? Asshole. So get ready. You're going to get a subpoena. I know you're hiding behind your lawyers, but we're going to find out where you are, which is really sad. So, so you know where I am, but you hide behind your lawyers like a little cockroach. Okay? That tells me everything I need to know about you that I didn't already know. But you are going to get deposed. And if you don't show, that's a contempt of court charge. And we've asked the federal court to sanction your lawyer because the games that are being played with filing and withdrawing things, which are clearly not allowed. Okay? So you got two battlefronts. Big shot. Two. All right? We'll see who comes out on top on this one. So we opened up a new mail receiving receptacle at the Jackie Robinson post office just around the corner here. Um, I didn't notice the address, but Alper did. Mentor Avenue. Mentor as in teacher. Very cool. Um, no specific uh, idea for this yet. Just uh, another place to receive mail. Uh, you know, if you want something, want to send us something, the address is published there in the notice board. Uh, I would like to mention that we're delaying the release of the sports mode. I mentioned this, I think, in a different video, but you may not have seen it. It was in a, a smaller group I sent it to. The sports mode manifesto doesn't feel uh, the right time to release it right now, but just because the, the national mood is off. So I'm still, uh, I'm still working on it. I just released chapter titles in uh, the, the cover dummy you know, the mock-up of the cover. 20% uh, plus unemployment. Uh, just look at the unemployment, uh, the total number of programs. They, they love to play games with these numbers. If you look at the people who are in all unemployment programs right now, including the pandemic insurance and all of that, it's 32 million, a little less than 32 million as of last reporting a couple of days ago. U.S. workforce, 160 million, give or take a couple million. Not 10 million, a couple million, okay? That's 20%. And that does not count. That does not count people who dropped out of the system, who, who uh, don't have any more um, benefits they can claim, or who never filed or just they've given up, okay? So I would put that at five more points. So it's 20 to 25, or I'll eat my socks, okay? It's 20 to 25%. Why is this important? Because policy decisions being made literally next week, okay, about unemployment and benefits and uh, programs to get us through this coronavirus, they're going to make the wrong decisions if they're using numbers that are ha half off. They're off by 50% <laughs> or 100% if you want to look at it the other way. Explosion of junk mail, okay? I am seeing an explosion of junk mail, not only in uh, emails, mostly in emails because it's cheap to send, uh, and a little bit in, in regular mail. And this is usually an indicator of stress times, okay, especially email. So, um, you know, it's getting caught. The spam filters we use are getting, I'm seeing more, much more, probably 100% more than normal. So I'm just saying that because uh, it, it, there's a lot of scams and a lot of bad things going out there. So be super, super, super skeptical of, of emails that you get that is not from somebody that you already have as a whitelisted uh, sender, which, by the way, please do that if you want to get our stuff. Make sure that your mailer, the mailers and the systems are getting more and more aggressive as time goes on. And I get complaints of people not getting things that they should get. Anyway, so point is be very, very careful because I've actually almost clicked on some things. They're, they're getting super, super clever with how they get you to click on stuff. If anything, just roll over the, hover over the link that you're thinking about clicking and you'll see the where it's gonna land and look in, your, in the bar and you'll see the address and it's gonna be something bizarre if it's a scam most of the time. It's not gonna be the domain you would be expecting. Like if it was an email from Microsoft, it's not gonna click back to Microsoft.com. It's gonna be like abc.123.com slash xyzzz.stealthemoney.com 
HTML. I mean, literally, it's stuff like that. So be very careful. Um, I'm seeing out account activations, people that have never, ever traded or cared over four years old. So li literally from when we first turned on the website. Never before. Uh, most people are still not willing to go to any large gathering event, no matter what it is, sports or otherwise. So big problems for the sports industry. Uh, Major League Baseball restart and poor Fauci, who I admire tremendously, but that I think that whole event and the way it looked uh, and, and the whole thing is kind of a metaphor. <laughs> I, it, it, I mean, all of it from him. Kind of, it kind of looked like he was forced to go stand out there like a prop and then throwing the ball way out of uh, bounds and then zoom back with the camera and there's nobody in the stands. Uh, I, it, I just went click. I was, it, 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 it felt horrible. It was a heartbreak. So I clicked it off. I talked to a couple friends. Uh, they're of the same mind. Like, uh, what is that? It's bizarro, weird looking. Um, yeah, I, then you have the, what is it, the Nationals player, one of the star players, COVID-19 positive. I'm on record saying this is going to be a mess. So watch it become a mess. Um, it's already disappointed with just the Fauci thing and just the way that that, the tone that that set, that's not a good, you know, summer baseball kickoff uh, visual. So hits on sports risk. So I monitor the term under Google Alerts, sports risk. I've monitored it for, for more than a decade. And I'm seeing a lot more hits on sports risk than I've ever seen before. I take this as a proxy for the general understanding. And I'm, I'm just starting to really hear serious conversations about this liability issue from COVID. Okay, so what they're trying to do now is they're trying to cram through some kind of policy in Washington to legislate that you can't sue for COVID. This is, I don't know how this is going to work. I don't think you can do that like that. Um, I mean, these are real risks and, you know, maybe you get people to sign a waiver, but waivers don't, don't stop people from filing lawsuits and waivers get destroyed in lawsuits. They get wiped out. So I don't think they're looking at this with clear eyes. Okay. Uh, you know, well, anyway, point is, the market is waking up to the problems of sports risk. I know that from just the number of times that that term sports risk is, uh, is showing up in, in publicly viewable stories, blog posts and such. Bad to worse in Vegas, 97% revenue drop reported by one of the big operators, so I can't remember right at the second, but a major one. Um, that's 97, that means you were, you know, I mean, come on, that's as good as there's nobody here, let's be honest. Uh, a burned up poker player and a dead person floating in the Bellagio pool. And a lot of people saying there's no hope here. Boo-hoo. Two years uh, anniversary Hero Club. Uh, that's just passed. I've been involved two years. I had the Friday call, which was video call, which all the program people got, which I think they're going to find very, very interesting because one of our um, partners who I've known for the whole time that I've been here, just uh, closed a, a very, very large unexpected deal. And another one um, who we met, uh, Zach and uh, Ace and I, I think Zach, Zach and I met because Ace wasn't there yet. He showed up later. Um, we met two years ago because it was, it seems like a thousand years ago, but it wasn't a thousand years ago. It was two years ago, okay, that I met these guys the first time and that we did the, the uh, stage presentation. So uh, he's now uh, in charge of a $20 billion social impact investing fund. And I know him. He knows me. I've met him a number of times. Uh, he's based in San Francisco. He's actually in the real estate space, too. And so uh, he's involved in opportunity zones. Chad is involved in real estate. So I'll so put them together. So anyway, that's just a few comments there. So that that's still very much alive. And some really interesting things have happened that... Um, you know, uh, people in our club if, are, are, are suddenly, um, I mean, one of these deals is just, it came out of the sky. It was not something that was being chased, but just the, the conditions that took place in the market uh, brought a buyer in. And, and this gentleman is very, very, uh, you know, he's sold out. <laughs> uh, he's still operating it, still being part of it, but he's had a, a gigantic windfall that wasn't expected. Um, so sports operating system is another term I'm playing around with. Uh, not sure if that makes any sense to anybody testing it out. 
the era of endless government money printing. So we're here, uh, not just in the, in the U.S., but everywhere. And the question, real question is, uh, what does that mean? You know, I mean, I, and I'm not sure, honestly. Um, you know, this is, not, this is not something that we've seen, at least not in, in my lifetime, and I'm not aware of it ever happening in modern history where all governments are, are just doing quantitative easing or whatever you want to call it. It's just hit the button and increase the liquidity, you know, just create more shares out of thin air. Um, shares. I mean, that's what happens with the Fed. They create money out of thin air. Okay. That's what they do. So create shares out of thin air. Companies do that when they sell them on the stock market. I mean, it's all electronic guys. It's just records in a database. Don't fool yourself. It's all the same stuff, just different records and different databases. So what happens in, uh, in the era of endless money, uh, government money printing? Um, nobody really knows yet. Um, Okay, so all the packages for the, the people who kept us alive for the last year went out last uh, week. Uh, so, uh, quite a few of them are international, which means customs is involved, something I have no control over. The only thing I can do is mark that it's a low value promotional item or a gift or, you know, that it's from a nonprofit and any custom charges in your country are, are not my problem. I have no control over that. There's nothing I, I couldn't even prepay them if I wanted to. So, um, so that's the deal with that. And if I said to you, I had the cure for cancer, if I told you, if I made the claim that I could cure cancer with a pill, would you listen to me? I mean, you know, not if I, and, and you didn't even have to pay me. If I just said, gave you a series of steps, uh, would you listen? You probably would. Well, that's how I feel about ASM and its value to the world and what it can do. Uh, and that's why I'm so stubborn about not giving up on it, even when the endless nightmares seem to just constantly be thrown at me, is because that's what I believe we have. And I'm, I've said that uh, gambling is a cure is, I'm sorry, gambling is a cancer on sports. And I stick by that statement. Um, I'm not letting that go. It's a fact. I can prove it. I can show you the damage that it does. Uh, we can get to the other stuff about society later. But if I told you that one step, one, one major step, if you took that one major step, you could cure cancer, would you listen? Even if I wasn't selling you anything, probably, right? So what if I told you that in one step, uh, one idea, okay, and that's to, to try out the idea of a performance asset class, that it would uh, fix the budget problems of the world and it would give everybody a job, would you at least try it? And in, even in the process of trying it, you, you get paid to try it and you make money on the trying it part. And maybe you don't believe me that it will do those things, but you'll make money on the way. Would you listen? Because that's what we have. Okay. And we really only have, we really only have one job. Okay. Only one job. And that's to get one public order that we can announce and publicize. And I even threw this out uh, that uh, to the call last week that, I have no problem having somebody come in and sit on the board or be involved in the finance department and be a signatory on the accounts or whatever so they can see that everything that money that's you know that the accounting is clear and that everything that is supposed to happen is happening and that there's no funny business that's fine okay because I know that if the machine is turned on in its form that it's supposed to be one to one with Everything represented the way we dreamed it out from the beginning, but never had a chance to actually do it, that it's going to work. So I have that confidence that if you that if you turn it on and you do it correctly, that it's going to work. So I have that to the level that you can literally stand over my shoulder and watch the money come and go. And I'm OK with that. OK. All right. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is the number one problem is the SEC. Now, it started off being that they wouldn't give us the uh, response to the no action, okay? Well, they responded. They lied to the courts, and they said that it never happened, and they asked me to take it down. The problem with that is I can prove it did happen, okay? So it would have been as simple as that. If, if that would have been acted upon like you're supposed to, like it's your job four years ago, okay, then the second part may not have happened which is you lied about it and you sued us. No jury on the face of the earth is going to understand this, okay? You are the headwind. You are the reason that we cannot do our job 
And that's why we're looking at counterclaims. And yes, I know they exist. And yes, I know they've succeeded in the past. So I'm going to continue to put these warnings out here because you don't have a case. You've damaged us. I can prove it. And you are the reason we can't finish the job. The fucking end. Okay. That's it for this week, folks. Thank you very much for your time. And I will update you again next Sunday. Stay safe with your friends and your family. Bye now.